Let's get started today with a song all about God's promises, because that's what we're talking about this week. So let's get up on our feet and let's worship God together.
Hey friends, so this month we are going to pretend that we are on an island paradise and we're going to talk about some of God's promises. So to get us ready, let's play a game. It is called Would You Rather? So basically there's going to be two options on the screen and then you go to the side of the room that you would enjoy the most. Let's play. Two options are going to come up on the screen. If you would rather do what's on this side, hula this way. And if you would rather do what's on this side of the screen, hula this way. Okay, here we go. Would you rather go surfing or snorkeling? Both of those are great. And did you know that surfing was invented here in Hawaii? Okay, time for the next one. Would you rather eat Hawaiian shave ice or spam sushi? Those two Hawaiian delicacies are easy to find here anytime you get hungry. Okay, how about one more? Would you rather hike up a volcano or dance at a luau? Believe it or not, hiking up a volcano is a blast and it's not as dangerous as you think, mainly because Mount Haleakala hasn't erupted in about 300 years. It's the largest dormant volcano in the world, so you've got to see it. Do you know what this is? That's a lei. Did you know that in Hawaiian culture, a lei is sort of like a necklace given to someone as a symbol of friendship or appreciation? That's cool. I've got one for you today. Yay! For those of you at home, you can make your own lei too. Pastor Mariah will put instructions on the website. Be sure to check it out. So let's wear our lays every week to remind us of all the wonderful things that God has made. Mariah, would you like to live in an island paradise? Yes. Yes. <laughs> How about you? What, where would you consider your paradise or your perfect place to live? I think Fiji's a nice place to live. Okay. Now, what would be some of the things there that would make it special? The white sandy beaches. Nice. Nice. All right. Let's check in with Chris to see... Um, and to learn some Hawaiian words. Aloha, Ohana. My name is Chris, and that's right. I called you family because we're all family here. In Hawaii, Ohana is the word we use for family. Let me hear you say, Ohana. There you go. I've got to teach you some more words in Hawaiian. Let's see if you can figure out what they mean. First up is aloha. Let me hear you say aloha. Do you think aloha means hello, bye, or I love you? Well, guess what? You're all right. Aloha is a really cool word that means all three of these things. Okay, now let me hear you say honu. Do you think a honu is a crab, turtle, or shark? Good guesses, but a honu is a turtle. All right, let me teach you one more word we say here in Hawaii. It's luau. Let me hear you say luau. Do you think luau means ocean, mountain, or feast? A luau is a feast where Hawaiians eat barbecue and dance. At the very beginning of time, God created a world and then he created humans to live in the world and to take care of it. Now, we are going to check out a Bible story video to see what exactly happened. It's time for our Bible story. After God made the heavens and the earth and plants and all of the animals and the light and everything we see, God made something amazing on the sixth day. What's that? God made humans. Like you and me? Yes, human beings. God made human beings to rule over the earth and sea and birds and all of the animals. Even the insects on the ground? For sure, even the insects on the ground. God created human beings in his own image. God created human beings, girls and boys both to be a reflection of all the things God is made of. But why don't we all look the same? Because we all reflect a different part of God in our hearts and in our minds, in our bodies too. Every person that is here is made in God's image and God told them to create more beautiful children just like God had created them. And they were to take care of the creation all around them 
all of the wildlife and animals and even each other. Amazing! God also made sure everyone had food to eat using the plants that have seeds and the fruit trees. Like bananas and mangoes? Exactly! But it didn't stop there. Although everything seemed extremely wonderful in the garden, there was one important thing that God told human beings not to do. God told Adam and Eve not to eat one kind of fruit on one super, uh -huh. off the limits tree. That seems simple enough. You think so, but there was a serpent there that was an enemy against all of the good things God had made. The serpent was a clever animal, and though human beings could do everything but this one thing, the serpent caused a woman to wonder why and question what God really meant. Oh no! The serpent asked Eve, did God really say that? God did say it, right? God sure did, but the serpent tricked her and made her think it was okay to do what God didn't want them to do. Now Eve was confused by what the serpent said and she ate the fruit from the tree that was off limits. She then gave some to her husband, Adam. When the evening came and God came to visit them, they hid because they were afraid. God spoke to them and they came out and told him what they had done and how the serpent tricked them. God, of course, was very disappointed and made the serpent to now be worse than all of the animals ever created. The serpent now will crawl in its belly in the dust forever. Humans now would have to work for their food and feel pain in ways that they hadn't felt before. All right, so Victoria and I have some questions for all of you. And after we ask the question, we're going to give you 30 seconds to come up with an answer. So the first question is, what are some w things that God provided for the first humans? We'll see you back in 30 seconds. God gave people the power to rule over all living things and gave them everything they needed. But even though they were given paradise, the first man and woman, like people do sometimes, messed up big time. The next question is, why do you think Adam and Eve listened to the serpent instead of remembering what God told them to do? So the very first humans disobeyed God. God had created this perfect world for them, but they chose to ignore the rule to not eat from the tree that was in the middle of the garden. They broke the trust between themselves and God by disobeying. Now, what do you think God did, even though he was disappointed with Adam and Eve? showed love even after Adam and Eve um, like disobeyed and they didn't listen to what God told them to do right God clothed them and then also prevented them from living forever but forever without God things got messy and dark but God promised to fix it all let's say the big idea together God, God promised, promised to, to fix what, what was broken, broken. 
Hi there, little chicken nuggets. It's me, Carl. And I'm Eduardo. And welcome to Grow TV. Welcome. I'm very excited you're here. He said it. Welcome to Grow TV. Introducing your host, Carl. And your co-host, Cassie. Where we learn, where we grow, and we talk about Jesus. Once again, welcome to Grow TV. Hello, everybody. So glad you could be here. And boy, do I have a surprise for you. I want you to meet someone who is very special to me. I was walking through the park one day, and in the middle of the sidewalk, there was this beautiful egg. I was stunned. I didn't know what to do. But what I did know is that if he stayed on that sidewalk, he would get hurt. So I took him home. So I present to you, Eduardo. Say hello, Eduardo. He's shy. What's that? Oh, stop. They're gonna love you. He's a little shy. Don't worry, Eduardo. There's no reason to be shy. Carl? Hey, Cassie. Are you feeling okay? Yeah, I'm feeling okay. Why do you ask? Really? I mean, you're talking to an egg. Oh, Cass. It's not just any old egg. This is Eduardo. Eduardo? Yes, ma'am. He's the cutest little egg in the world. Not only is a one in a million egg, he's a one in a dozen. Okay. Did you give him that name? Sure did. Thought of it myself. You like it? Sure. It's interesting. Well, I mean, it wasn't my first choice. You want to hear the other names I thought of? Not really. Great. So at first I thought of Shelly because of the chill. Then I thought that wasn't strong enough of a name. Then I thought of Yoko. Scarlett Yokehampton, Thomas Egison, Egna, Yoklanda, Lil Yoki, Edgar Allan Poe, Egg Sharon, Egg Xavier, and Greg. Greg? Yeah, like Gur Egg. Nice. So what now? Are you guys like best friends now? We are. When we found each other, it just linked. Like two childhood friends who knew each other since like, well, childhood. Not gonna lie, that's a little weird. Cassie, you wouldn't understand. It's an egg thing. I guess. You should have seen me. We are playing catch just like the old days. What old days? Back when I used to play baseball. You never played baseball. Oh yeah, I forgot. <gasps> Harry, take a deep breath. Okay? Eduardo! I dropped him! I'm a terrible person! Carl, you're not a terrible person. Yes, I am. No way. You're nice, you're funny, and you make videos that crack people up all the time. I do? Yeah. I make people crack up all the time. Oh, I, I didn't Just mean... like I would crack Eduardo! <laughs> Listen, Carl, I think we should talk about this week's story. What's the point? Well, I think it'll make you feel better. Really? Really. Remember the beginning of the Bible where God created the universe? Yeah, I do remember that. That was awesome and perfect. It was, and on the sixth day of creation, God created the first two humans ever, Adam and Eve. And they were pretty perfect too. They were. It was all created the way God wanted it to be. But something bad happened. <gasps> oh no. There was a bad snake that lied to Adam and Eve. And after God had made everything, the Bible talks about a serpent talking to Adam and Eve. A serpent? Like a snake? Why would they talk to a snake? It's hard to say, but the serpent was very clever. You see, snakes represented the presence of evil or chaos in the world, and that's what the serpent wanted. He wanted Adam and Eve to doubt themselves and want something else, something they knew God didn't want for them. So they listened to the serpent which no longer made them perfect as God created them. That's horrible. This is a sad story. Sure was, but later in Genesis chapter three, God made a promise. What promise did God make? God promised that even though people are no longer perfect, God's ways would always be, and that God could make what was broken whole again. So God promised to fix what was broken? Yep, and you wanna know some good news? I would love some good news. You just said our big idea. <gasps> 
today's big idea is God promised to fix what was broken. That's right. On the count of 100, no, three, we're all gonna say it together. Ready? One, two, three. God, God promised to fix what is broken. Woohoo! All right. Good job, everyone. Yeah. So how are you feeling now, Carl? <sighs> Better. It hurts seeing something that I love broken, but it's cool to know that God can fix things that are broken. Plus, having an egg as a best friend can be really tough. I guess you could say it isn't all that it's cracked up to be. <laughs> See you next week, kids. Thank you for watching, and tune in next week for a new episode of Pro TV. All right, I need everyone to grab a piece of paper, a blank piece of paper, and a marker. Victoria and I have ours, so we need you to run, 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 run. Do you have it? Hopefully you do. Okay, what do you think the perfect island paradise would be? Or actually a better question. What do you think the perfect garden would look like? Where Adam and Eve were. What do you think that garden would look like? So I want all of us to draw a picture of it and we'll come back in one minute. That was not enough time. <laughs> Let's show off our pictures. All right, what did you draw? Ooh, nice. I, again, I did not get a chance to draw all of mine, but I drew a nice sunset, because sunsets are pretty. And then I started to draw some flowers and bushes. <laughs> all right, so all of us have this paper that represents a perfect world. Now what do we do? Take a look at your paper and imagine it. Now, rip your paper in half. What? That's so sad. Okay, so when the first humans disobeyed God, it was kind of like this ripped up piece of paper, right? What was perfect became broken. Um, but thank goodness we have a God who continues to repair our broken world, right? So if you have some tape at home, or if you're at the church, we've got some tape for you. I want you to tape your picture back together because God promised to fix what was broken. Now, I think we're gonna play another game. Yeah, let's play another game. Anu is one cool chameleon. He blends in with whatever he is near. Can you find him? Where is Anu hiding this time? Can you find Anu now? Where is Anu hiding this time? God loves everything he created, even the people who mess up and don't do things he wants them to do. We know from reading the Bible that God had a plan all along to fix people's relationship with him, especially the one that was broken when Adam and Eve disobeyed. Because that's who God is. Let's read this Bible passage together that describes how amazing God is. All right, I'm going to read Psalm 145, verses 8 and 9. 
The Lord is merciful and compassionate, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. The Lord is good to everyone. He showers compassion on all his creation. Now, how would you react if someone broke something that you cared a lot about? Probably would not be in a good way, right? Um, But God reacts differently. God is willing to fix whatever is broken because he is compassionate. He is gracious. He is slow to get angry and he loves us so much. If you have pipe cleaners at home, you can do this activity with us. All right, I have to tell you what the activity is. Okay, we are going to make a heart out of the pipe cleaner. So I'm gonna make an M first. Sort of like that. And then I'm gonna bring the two ends together. So it looks like a heart. All right, so When we create something, we have a sense of pride and joy, and we love this item that we have just created, right? And that's how God feels about the world he created, about the people he created, right? He loves us. And now I want you to crush your pipe cleaner heart. Sometimes people do things that destroy the world or ruin relationships but God promised to fix what was broken. This time, straighten out your pipe cleaner and make another heart. God can take something that was destroyed and fix it. We can be a part of of fixing what was broken too. All right, I got my heart. Nice. Let's play one last game before we learn this month's memory verse. Surf's up. Everybody get on your feet and let's ride some waves. Watch out because there are some crazy things coming our way. We'll need to jump or duck as we ride to make it safely to shore. Starting to memorize a new verse this month. So let's check in with Sunny to see what the verse is and how to say it in sign language. Joshua 21, 45. Not one of all the Lord's good promises to Israel failed. Every one was fulfilled. Let's pray together. Dear God, we know you keep your promises. Thank you for promising to fix what is broken and helping us learn how to do the same. God, we love you so much, and in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Make sure to check out the Crosslands Church website sometime this week. You're going to find a bunch of fun activities to do with your family. We will see you next week. Bye!